Welcome to the London School of English Live. Uh, in our session today, our expert at trainer, John Dyson, will share useful advanced English expressions for informal conversations. You will also be able to participate in interactive quizzes, which we hope will help you to get one step closer to an advanced uh, level of English. Here with us today, we also have Faiza Afzal from our sales team, uh, who will share her advice on topics uh, on this topic, as well as uh, uh, on our Q&A session at the end of the live stream. Before we start with the main content, uh, Faiza, over to you for a few words about our English courses. Great, thanks very much, Olga. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Um, great to see you again, Frank. He's saying hello to us. Um, so we offer a variety of courses here at the London School of English. Um, you can join us for classes face-to-face -face at our center in Holland Park uh, in London. And we also offer training online um, if you would like to join from where you are. Uh, we have a book with confidence uh, guarantee. So no matter your circumstance or if there are any changes to your plans, we would be very happy to support you, um, whether you need to join us online or face-to-face. -face. Um, hello also to Diana too. Um, and yeah, if you would like more information, feel free to check our website. So it's www.lendonschool.com, just at the bottom right there for you. Um, or you can email us as well at clients at lendonschool.com and we would be more than happy to help you. That's it from me, and I will pass you on to John. Okay, thanks, Pfizer. Thanks, Olga. Um, welcome, everyone, for another live stream from the London School of English. My name is John Dyson, and I'm one of the trainers here at the London School of English. I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today for our live stream. Uh, As so a quick hello to Frank and to Diana, who have both joined us early. Uh, today, we're going to look at 20, roughly 20, probably a few more, idiomatic expressions that we can use for advanced conversational English. Now, of course, there are literally hundreds of expressions I could have chosen for this uh, live stream, but uh, I decided to break the live stream into four sections. And each of these sections are rich in conversational possibilities. So we've got the um, 20 idioms for casual conversation. And casual conversation could mean, I mean, we use other expressions such as having a chat or chewing the fat, which is probably one you've never heard of, or putting the world to rights. So yes, we say having a chat, which everybody's probably familiar with, chewing the fat, which refers to having a conversation over a piece of meat where you are chewing as you are talking, or putting the world to rights, which is what we all want to do with our conversations, because the world is a complicated place nowadays. So let's begin. Part one, uh, section one, I've called telling a tale. Now we all like explaining things and telling each other about our personal situations. It's the very stuff of friendship. So here's part of a conversation about a relationship which has, unfortunately, gone a little bit bad. This is a conversation between two friends called uh, Simon and Jorge. And Simon says, I know you don't have much time. So to cut a long story short, Andrea and I aren't going to see each other again. And Jorge says, oh, that's a pity. You must feel terrible. Why does she want to end it? So let's just go back to that first expression to cut a long story short. I think the idiom is relatively easy to understand. So what it basically means is to condense a long explanation or story into a shorter one for the purposes of not boring the other person for one thing. So to cut a long story short, we're not gonna see each other again. So Kohe goes on. So that's a pity. Uh, Simon says, in a nutshell, and I, in a nutshell is also a very similar uh, ex, um, expression to, to cut a long story short. In a nutshell means in very few words, in a sentence. So in a nutshell, she said it was a relationship which wasn't going anywhere. And then... He continues speaking. I haven't put in all the details, but he continues speaking about his sad situation. 
And then when they get to the end of the conversation, Simon says, well, Kohei, thanks for giving me a shoulder to cry on. I really needed to get all of that off my chest. Now, to give someone a shoulder to cry on means to provide sympathy in a difficult or bad moment to that person, to provide sympathy and to provide a sympathetic ear to listen to what they're telling you. And then we have the other expression, I needed to get that off my chest. To get something off your chest is to, to say, to verbalize something which has been bothering you or disturbing you for quite a long time. And when you've got something off your chest, you very often, you feel relieved. So you have a feeling of relief. Oh, thank goodness for that. I'm so happy to get that off my chest. And then we go back to the dialogue. And Simon says, actually, I think she, Andrea, his now ex-girlfriend, I think she owes me an apology for being so emotionally brutal. But I'm not holding my breath. Now, that expression, I'm not holding my breath, is something you would use at the end of a, a sentence. For example, if you're saying, well, I think the government should do this, or he should do that, or she should apologize to me. But if you say, I'm not holding my breath, it means I don't expect it. It's not likely to happen. Because if you hold your breath waiting for that to happen, well, you may have an unfortunate end because it's probably not going to happen. So I'm not holding my breath. Good. So that is the end of part one. That's a short dialogue about, um, you know, having a conversation about our personal lives. Moving on to part two. Part two is, is I, I've called this out and about. And this is, uh, again, we'll look at a short conversation where two friends are talking about a rather special restaurant. And so the friends, Alex and Joanna, uh, are chatting together in the street. And Alex says, by the way, have you heard about that restaurant in Knightsbridge, Steakhouse Central? Joanna replies, no, I haven't. What about it? And Alex says, it sells a two kilogram tomahawk steak at 1,450 pounds. A can of Red Bull costs 11 pounds 50, and a cappuccino is 40 pounds. And Joanna is amazed. What? Yeah, says Alex. It costs an arm and a leg to eat there. It costs an arm and a leg which means it costs an enormous amount of money to eat there. God, it costs an arm and a leg. So, for example, going to a very special concert or something like that costs cost you an arm and a leg. It may be worth it. It may not. Joanna doesn't think it's worth it. She says, it sounds like a complete rip-off to me. A complete rip-off. And a rip-off is something where... So it is far too expensive in, to re in relation to the quality or the quantity of what you receive or in relation to what the normal price would be. So if you go to somewhere and you say, I'd like, um, I'd like a Coke, please, a can of Coke, and they say, that's, uh, that's five pounds, sir. What? That's a ripoff. So they're trying to make money out of you. And so Alex replies, well, yes, it does sound like a ripoff, doesn't it? Surely no one can afford to go there more than once in a blue moon. Now then, once in a blue moon, that means hardly ever, extremely infrequently. So you'd say, well, I can't, I don't have a lot of money. So if I want to go to a Michelin starred restaurant, I'll go once in a blue moon. But that means not very often. And Joanna replies, I guess so. <laughs> and then she jokes, maybe you could take your boyfriend there. And Alex replies, ha, pigs might fly. Which means that is something that is not going to happen. 
because of course pigs can't fly as you know so it's as likely as pigs fly pigs might fly i don't love him that much says alex about her unfortunate boyfriend i don't think it's the same boyfriend from the previous conversation by the way so yes uh, joanna continues the conversation and says the owner and chef is turkish apparently he's a real instagram personality he loves putting on a show at his restaurant alex is not convinced she says well the whole thing sounds a bit ott to me how can anyone spend that much on a piece of meat now when you say something is ott that is actually an abbreviation of three words which are over the top so it means when something is a little too exaggerated for the situation or the, the context so it could refer to a thing something could be ott it could refer to a situation or it could be a personality oh he's really ott i mean he's very exaggerated very um rather too much the sense so it's very over the top it's a bit over the top so yes so that's uh out and about talking about a um, a very special restaurant so so far we've looked at two areas of conversation where idioms can be really useful and can really illustrate what you want to say much more than just using the definition so having said that using these two parts we're going to have a quiz and here we go ah yes somebody has put in a russian name i can see they put daylight robbery yes that's a great expression it's daylight robbery is exactly the same as saying it's a rip-off meaning it's like somebody robbing you in the middle of the day when everybody can see you yes daylight robbery great expression that really like that okay let's move on we're going to do a quiz just to see uh so you're ready for a quiz i'm sure you are just to see how well you remember these so i'll give you a sentence you'll see a sentence and a gap and four different options so as soon as you think you know the answer type it into your keyboard and let's see it in the uh, the chat stream so here's number uh, letter a yes not number one letter a i must say as a presenter he really puts on a show a little too mm, if you ask me so is it otc is it ocd is it ott or is it otp which of those four options is it get your fingers typing otc ocd ott or otp well done frank very quick and well done andrea as well you got in there quick today that's good diana ott yeah i mean in a way it was a little easy because you've just seen that one the next one let's try this one but well done anyway i, I don't want to belittle your achievement there so sentence b he's a really nice person always happy to give you a mm, to cry on if you're feeling really down so is it a shoulder a head an arm or a neck to cry on he's a really nice person always happy to give you a there's a, a something to cry on if you're feeling really down i nearly gave you the answer there didn't I? good well done andrea you're on the ball today a shoulder to cry on that's right he's a really nice person look if you ever need a shoulder to cry on come to me i've always got a sympathetic ear because we're close friends okay let's move on to well gosh you're all really on the ball this afternoon i can see all these answers flying in on our chat stream well done everyone okay c here's a question when will there be peace and prosperity across the world and the answer hmm. when pigs hmm. is it when pigs swim when pigs fly when pigs run or when pigs dance which one is it swim fly run or dance well done frank you are truly on the board get in there straight away these are really quick answers coming in today that's great keep them coming okay yeah so the answer is when pigs fly because <laughs> have you ever seen a pig with a pair of wings no i don't think so not gonna happen sentence d 
in our quiz. Going into space on Jeff Bezos's rocket will cost you an mm and a leg. Is it an ankle and a leg, an elbow and a leg, a price and a leg, or an arm and a leg? Which of them is it? Yeah, it will cost you, uh, we have another expression, we say a pretty penny. It will cost you, right, well done, Diana, Andrea. And it's, and Takeshi, well done, an arm and a leg. It costs an arm and a leg. Now, some things, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, you can, um, I say, I went to see um, Bruce Springsteen in concert. The ticket cost me an arm and a leg, but it was worth it. The memory will live with me forever. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Well done, Mariam. It's good to see you here with us again from Turkey. Okay, the next one. E, when does he pay for his own drinks in the pub? <laughs> Once in a blue... Oh, I just told you the answer. <laughs> okay, let's see. Once in a pink, blue, red, or yellow. Sorry, I'm so used to using these expressions that I've ended up saying them for you so that's a very easy one i'll give you that one as a gift well done everyone yes blue once in a blue moon and in fact blue moon is also a song for the football club manchester city blue moon i saw you standing alone without a care in your heart yeah blue moon very famous song look it up on youtube so Everybody's got blue, that's right. And that is the end of that five part quiz. And I think I can safely say that everyone has got five out of five. So well done on that. Let's move on to part three of the webinar. Now we're gonna look at news, talking about it, questioning it and verifying it. So not the news on the BBC, I'm talking about somebody telling you I've called this, have you heard the latest? So here we go, it's a, two converse, a conversation between two people. It's Paula and Mari, and they're talking uh, in a company, in an office somewhere, and Paula says, have you heard the CEO's leaving the company? And Mari says, really? Who told you that? Paula replied, well, I, I heard it on the grapevine. This is a very interesting expression the grapevine is the plant where you grow grapes before you pick them to make wine so i heard it on the grapevine and what it means of course is that i got this information from an unofficial or unverified source and this is usually what we would call second hand or even third hand rumors so if you hear something on the grapevine be very careful because it's not necessarily true. I think rumors can go through very different versions, many different versions before they reach, uh, you know, me or you. So Mary says, well, look, never trust second or third hand rumors. I spoke to the CEO's PA yesterday and apparently she's the CEO. She's about to sign a new contract to stay in position. I think you're barking up the wrong tree with that story. Anyway, why would she want to leave when we're making record profits? So Mary's a bit skeptical, we can say, about the Paula's um, rumor, which she heard on the grapevine. Yeah, again, that's a good expression. Rumor has it, rumor has it that, yeah, so rumor has it that the CEO is going to leave. And what uh, she says, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. So barking up the wrong tree, of course, means that you're believing or you're following a mistaken or misguided line of thought. Now, Frank has a question. He says, grapevine, is it like gossip? Well, it's not so much gossip, Frank. It's just that the nature of a grapevine as a plant is that it grows, it grows horizontally. So it's like saying if a message begins here, wait a minute, I'm trying to get myself on screen doing the right thing. Message begins here, it travels along the grapevine 
until it reaches the other end. So that's why we say, I heard it on the grapevine. Yeah. Gossip is simply a very general term we use for any conversation where you are speaking about a third person or other people. And usually it's quite uh, personal information. So yes, office gossip is a very common phenomenon in most organizations yes and chinese whispers yes i nearly mentioned that Ch chinese whispers is a very interesting expression it means um it's a game actually you play it in a circle and one person starts by whispering something to the next person and that person has to whisper it to the next person whisper not speak and it goes all the way around the circle. And it is very funny because when it reaches the end of the circle, very often it bears no relation to the original message from the person who started. So again, Chinese whispers, yes, organizations are full of Chinese whispers, meaning by the time you receive the story, that story has been filtered through 10 different people. So you get a very um, different version from reality. Anyway, let's head back to our uh, dialogue. So um, Paula says, well, why? Would, yes, I mean, and Mary says, well, why would she want to leave when we are making record profits? We're doing really well. And Paula says, well, from what I heard, she's involved in some kind of personal scandal. And, and Mary interrupts and says, no, 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 no. That all smells a bit fishy to me. It smells a bit fishy. Why don't you ask her directly? Yeah, this whole story smells a bit fishy. I think you can work out what that means. It, it means it appears to be a bit suspicious, a bit strange. It doesn't sound true. It's hard to believe. So there you have a picture of uh, fish. And I think those fish are sardines. And sardines are some of the smelliest fish that you've, you've ever tried i mean they're nice they taste good but they do smell quite strong so that smells a bit fishy mm, i wouldn't believe that story it smells a bit fishy so um mary says smells a bit fishy why don't you talk to the ceo directly instead of getting all these rumors from different people ask her face to face and you will hear the truth straight from the horse's mouth yeah you'll hear the truth straight from the horse's mouth yeah, that's right. Uh, and if you say, well, get the story straight from the horse's mouth, it means get the information from the person who originated or who is the subject of this rumor or gossip and speak to them because that way you can get the definitive story. You know that you're getting a story from someone who knows that that story is definitely true. Yeah. <laughs> so Frank, Frank has just put on the chat that sardines are good with butter. Hmm. Okay, I'll bear that in mind, Frank. Uh, yeah, so I, I think you're referring to sardines. Yeah, so um, sardines with butter, right. So I think that uh, that's the, the, the end. Oh, no, yes, it is. It's the end of the conversation. So we've got all of those expressions we've seen. It smells a bit fishy. I heard it on the grapevine. Don't be careful about barking up the wrong tree, getting, you know, getting the wrong end of the stick, which is another expression. I think you've got the wrong end of the stick means I think you've misunderstood the information that you've been given and you've interpreted it in the wrong way. And the last one, get the information straight from the horse's mouth. Okay. Good, so that's part three. And now we're gonna move on to the last part, which is part four, of course. And this I've called, I'm not really sure. And all of these uh, expressions around uh, uncertainty, if you like. And they're not long dialogues, they're more like exchanges. So let's look at exchange number one. Uh, so this is John and Ben. And John says, well, what's that famous, um, Egyptian footballer called. He, he plays for Liverpool. And Ben says, oh, I can't remember. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, it's Mohamed Salah, Mo Salah. 
So if you say something is on the tip of your tongue, it means you can almost say it, but you're just trying to remember it enough to be able to produce it. Yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. Give me a minute and I'll remember. Yeah. So that's the first expression. Then if we move on to number two, Sandra asks Abdul, how much is our pay rise going to be this year? Good question. Abdul replies, off the top of my head, I think it's about 5%. But don't quote me on that. I don't want to start spreading rumors that may not be correct. So when we say off the top of my head, the, the message you are sending to the listener is that this information is not uh, 100% certain. I am giving you spontaneous response to your question, but it's not necessarily the exactly correct one. So if somebody says to you, what's the population of your capital city? And you say, well, I'm not absolutely sure, but off the top of my head, it's... 10 million, something like that. So it's really a signal to the listener that this is not definitive information. And then we've got the next one, but don't quote me on that because obviously this is a delicate subject talking about pay rises. So what Abdul doesn't want is for Sandra to go around telling all her colleagues, Abdul told me that our salary rise is going to be 5%. Yeah. So you want to hear it firsthand. So um, it's off the, the off the top of my head. Don't quote me on that. So when you quote someone, this is what um, newspaper journalists and reporters do. To quote someone means to use exactly the same words that they have used, and also to use their name as the reference. So you often see quotes in newspaper articles, for example. Now, uh, we've got off the cuff here is mentioned. Uh, and off the cuff, yeah, off the cuff is more like this is a spontaneous, this is a spontaneous piece of speech, for example. So um, let's say, for example, when I went to a party the other night for John's retirement, um, he made a very funny off the cuff speech and what it literally means what it literally means is that he reads the speech off his cuff he writes something very quickly so it's a very um spontaneous and improvised conversation off the cuff some people can do it some people mm, not so much but often off the cuff speeches are very amusing yeah, and so we've got, don't quote me on that, and as, as our Russian friend says, I'm not going to be held responsible for that. That's what it's saying. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, Vitaly, okay, I got your name. Thank you. Right, Vitaly, I won't call you our Russian friend anymore because now I know your name. You're Vitaly. Okay, moving on to the third um, exchange, we have Sonia and Mark, and Sonia says... How do you feel about this awful situation? And Mark says, I have mixed feelings. Part of me understands why it's happening, but the other part says it could have been prevented. And Sonny says, I agree. I'm in two minds about whether to resign or to stay put. Yeah, so I've got mixed feelings. So when you have mixed feelings, it means that your feelings can be positive and negative at the same time. You know, so it's like saying, well, when I finish working here, I'm going to have really mixed feelings because, you know, on the one hand, I've loved working here. I've met so many great colleagues. But on the other, I think I need to stop working now and go and relax a bit and do other things. Well, mixed feelings. So it's going to be a strange occasion when I retire. And the other expression, I'm in, I'm in two minds. Mind one, mind two, I'm in two minds, is really another way of saying, I can't decide. I, I have two different options in my mind. So I'm undecided between these two options. I'm in two minds about this. Okay. And moving on to the fourth and final exchange, we have an exchange between Jürgen and Helen. And uh, Jürgen says, Helen, what will you do if you don't pass the test? 
And Helen says, no idea. Anyway, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So that's referring to, obviously, it's referring to the future. And what it means is I'll deal with that possibly negative future situation or challenging future situation when or if it happens. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Often this is an expression which is used as a kind of excuse for not planning ahead. So he says, what will you do if you don't pass the test? Ah, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Yeah, we've got Vitaly's putting in some very interesting um, words here. We've got the word ambiguous, which means with two possible meanings. So I think you could say I'm feeling ambiguous about this. Part of me is feeling happy because I'm going to have lots of free time. But part of me is feeling really sad because I'm, um, you know, I'm going to miss everybody. And Vitaly also put the expression, I'm sitting on the fence. As sitting on the fence isn't quite the same as in, in two minds. If you say I'm sitting on the fence, what it means is I'm not going to commit myself to making a decision one way or the other. So it's like, well, which political party do you support? Ah, I don't know. Come on, John, don't sit on the fence. Decide one way or the other. I, I, I want to wait until I've heard more of them speaking. So if you're sitting on the fence, you know, very often what it means is you're not prepared, you're not willing to make a decision about something. Okay, and wrapping up a conversation, I put in a little extra section here at the end called wrapping up the conversation, which means, you know, finishing off your conversation. And typically we'll use an expression like, okay, well, um, I'll keep you posted. And I'll keep you posted is a good way of ending the conversation in that what it means is I'll keep you up to date with any further news or the latest news. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. Yes, keep me posted. You know, fill me in about what's happening. Send me some information. Send me a message telling me what's going on. And then we have a very interesting um, idiomatic expression, which sounds rather strange. It, the expression is break a leg. And what it means is be lucky. I think this the origin of this expression is from the theatre. It is traditional. When an actor or an actress starts a play at the very first night, the last thing that somebody says to them in order to say good luck is break a leg. So it's a kind of like rather ironic idiomatic expression because it doesn't mean break a leg, it means be lucky. Yeah, but obviously, if you break a leg, then you're going to be out of the production and replaced by your, your substitute. Yeah, that's right. Ali Abdi, you, you put, I will deal with it. This is going back to, uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I will deal with it when I approach it. That's right. I will solve that problem. I will take a decision. I will decide what to do if and when that situation occurs. Okay, break a leg. Another expression that we use is hang in there, hang in there. I know it's difficult, but stay persistent, stay strong and stay determined. Even when the situation is so difficult, I know this is difficult for you, John, but hang in there, hang in there. Things will get better. Yeah, so it's almost like saying keep trying to survive. Yeah. And the last one is time flies oh and this is good when you look at your watch and say oh time flies i'd better be off i'd better be off is is, a, is an interesting construction is i had better be off meaning i must go so oh time flies and you could either add when you're having fun that is the complete expression but you know, i think you know, sometimes we just use it with time flies. Time flies. I'd better be off. See you later, alligator. Yeah. So time and well, time flies obviously means when you're having a good time, it goes uh, it goes nice and you know it goes quickly. Yeah. And again, Vitaly, yes, you said when we have been coming back to um, the expression, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Then what it means is I'll deal with it ad hoc. Yes, I'll I'll deal with it 
on an ad hoc basis. I'll deal with it as it arises. That's right. Ad hoc is a, a Latin expression. Yeah. And to be in two minds, yes, it's to waver. That's a good word, uh, Vitaly. It's, it's to, to, um, to not be sure which decision to take. Yes, to have different options and to be undecided. Okay, to finish off our live stream, uh, I've got another quiz, which is five more sentences where you have to decide which is the best option. So let's go for it. Here we go. Quiz part two. So sentence A, hmm, that story, mm, a little bit fishy to me. Is it smells, tastes, looks, or seems? Smells, taste, looks, or seems. A bit fishy. There is another expression we use with, with fishy, actually. We can say that story sounds a little bit fishy. But in this case, exactly. Takeshi, well done. It smells. Yeah, it smells a bit fishy to me, that story. I think, uh, yeah, you should take that story with a pinch of salt. Take something with a pinch of salt means be skeptical about it. Okay, uh, sentence B. You're taking your driving test tomorrow. Well, I hope it goes well. Breaker, knee, wrist, elbow, leg. Which of these four is it? Is it break a knee, break a wrist, break an elbow, or break a leg? Good luck. That story is not reliable. Yes, okay, that's right, Ali, Ali referring back to the... Um, it smells a little bit fishy, then that's quite correct. It's um, the story is not reliable. And Takeshi, you've got in there again with the correct answer. Well done. It's to break a leg, break a leg. OK, good. Let's look at sentence C. And sentence C begins with, what are you doing at Christmas? Well, I could go back to Italy or I could stay here in London. I mean, mm, minds about it, to be honest. Is it two minds, mixed minds, three minds, or different minds? What's the correct answer there? Two, mixed, three, or different? I mean, mm, minds about it, quite honestly. Right, well done, Takeshi, again. You come in here and you are doing really well. You're a star. You've got very quick fingers to type those answers. Yeah, I mean, two minds about it. Italy, London, Italy, London. Where would you spend Christmas if you could? Would you spend it in Italy? Or would you spend it in London? Personally, I'd spend it. I, well, I don't know, actually, to tell you the truth. I'm in two minds. Sentence D. When it comes to climate change and the crisis in gl rising global temperatures, too many politicians seem to believe that we can cross that mm, when we get to it. So climate change, global temperatures, too many politicians seem to believe that we can cross that mm, when we get to it. Maybe it'll be too late. Is it cross that road, cross that bridge, cross that path, or cross that track? And bridge is the right answer. Well done, Frank. You've got in there. Well done, Maja. You've got, oh, that's leg. That's in the previous one, but well done. Takeshi, you've got bridge as well. Well done, everyone. You're definitely all on the ball tonight. Yes, well done, Vitaly. And finally, my last sentence, sentence E. If you think football is only about sporting talent and not big business, then you're mm, up the wrong tree. Is it climbing? Is it looking? Is it speaking? Or is it barking? If you think business football is just about sporting talent and sport, yes, Takeshi, it is. It's barking up the wrong tree because football is business. I love football, but football is big business, isn't it, nowadays? Anyway, it won't stop me from loving it. So that, after quiz two, brings me to the end of my uh, talk in today's uh, live stream about useful idioms for casual conversations at an advanced level. So thank you all very much for listening and thank you very much for participating so actively. You've all been throwing in these answers really quickly today. That's That's been great. It's good to see. So thanks a lot and I'll hand you back to Olga. 
Thanks very much, John, and uh, fantastic participation from everyone uh, here. It's good to see um, lots of people who uh, have been in our live streams before, our alumni, uh, people joining us from different uh, corners of the world, uh, and also new uh, faces as well. So um, uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, to uh, all our viewers, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, share with us in the live chat and uh, we'll attempt to answer uh, them uh, here right now in the Q&A session. And uh, John and Faiza, here's our first question. Uh, what are the best ways to discover and learn advanced expressions for informal conversations in English? I, I, I can <laughs> I, I sure. think one thing is that reading um, newspapers, reading media, reading articles, certainly one way. I think you you need it's important to be curious about new mm. expressions and say, okay, that's that's an interesting expression. I'd like to know what it means. So you know, finding out about it like that, you can also hear people using them. Sometimes you you you. You know, all sorts of people use these kinds of expressions sometimes without even thinking about it. No, so, I would say, you know, um, yeah, also, sorry. John, like to, to watch TV shows as well that are set in particular yeah. places. Like, they often yeah. bring in this idiomatic language or slang, and you can find yourself hearing something and being like, what did that mean? And then you can look it up um, afterwards. But yeah, 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 absolutely. Place. Yeah. And in terms of remembering them, one of the things I always say to my learners is, well, take the trigger word, try and learn the, you know, the very um, memorable words. So, for example, grapevine. I said, oh, the grapevine. oh, yes, I heard it on the grapevine. Because hopefully that trigger will help you to remember the whole expression. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks uh, for your tips. Uh, and. Um, Kind of following up on uh, uh, following on that um, is um, how does practicing English after classes in London help? I can take that one. Um, I so we have, for example, opportunities for students to practice uh, during their lunch or during their breaks, but also after school with our social program. Um, and I think one of the big advantages of joining something like the social program is you're still in that environment with people that are trying to learn a language, um, but it's a bit more relaxed. It's a bit more casual and um, you still feel that safety of being with the, the similar group of people, but you can try something. You can see if it works. You can ask people a question. Um, with how we structure our social programs, you'll go with, with one of our, um, a member of staff and they'll be able to help you as well. So um, it's often really nice as a way for you to try something for the first time. So for example, this evening, there's a pub evening. Other times we have walking tours or last week we went for mini golf and um, you can use that opportunity to practice some of the language you're learning. So if you need to make an order or if you need to make a request, um, you can do so and you know, perhaps just try it yourself or you could be like, oh, could you just check if I'm, if I if I if I think this is the right way to ask this or to say this, but um, the casual atmosphere can sometimes take away the nerves of when you're in a classroom. In case you have any of them at first, or in case you have them at work, um, so it's it's a nice way for you to just consolidate and continue to practice in a safe in a safe environment. Great, thanks, Faiza. Um, John, would you like to add anything else to this? I think Pfizer said it all there. <laughs> I would agree that sometimes, yeah, the, the being in a more relaxed atmosphere does help to free up the the tongue a little to start remembering these things and producing them. There's not so much pressure. And of course, you know, out and about, you may hear these expressions being used. And, uh, you know, I think the important thing is what I said before, curiosity. Mm -hmm. You want to know what do we have an equivalent uh, expression in our own language? Is that would that help me to remember it? And um, yeah, there's such a lot of rich idiomatic language in English. Like, there yeah. isn't a lot of languages. Yeah, um, I tend to find also when I'm learning something, whether it's a language or something else, the first time I have to apply it, I tend to remember it a little bit better. So you know, you could have been, for example, um, discussing how you make a request, whether that's 
a request in general terms or whether that's a business request. And then all of a sudden you're in an environment where you have to make a request yourself and you're like, oh, I've said it, I've applied it, it's worked. <laughs> and then you might find that you remember it a little bit more. So exactly. that works well. You have to speculate um, to accumulate. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I also believe that we have a few uh, photos from our recent social mm -hmm. programs here mm -hmm. in London. Um, so uh, we'll try and show them right now. Yep. So uh, Pfizer, uh, so I guess that's one of the photos from, from the recent. Uh... Yes, this was um, at the uh, mini golf that we went mm -hmm. to um, last week which is not like real golf, <laughs> as we've learned. You don't transfer those skills. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we have some more photos. Yep. Uh, it's, yeah, so it's uh, a photo of you. Yes, so I, I joined our students and we had a, a nice evening playing some mini golf. Mm -hmm. This, I think, is one of our recent walking tours. Um, so you're able to actually explore quite a little bit of London. Um, so they've done places like Notting Hill, um, Hampstead. I think this is somewhere out east, if I'm not mistaken. I think this might be close to um, to Liverpool uh, Street Station. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then uh, another question, yes. uh, another mini golf. Mini golf, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Great. So it's really nice to see such a uh, wide uh, uh, kind of array of different activities. Mm -hmm. well. Next week, because we're going in theme with the season, uh, we've got some pumpkin carving. Oh, fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we, we try and give everyone the opportunity to, like, you know, get to know London, um, spend some time at some of the famous sites or just, you know, find yourself in British culture as well. So that's often where you get the feel of... Um, for example, the pub experience or restaurants. And as John said, like you can pick up some conversation. So you might overhear somebody using some expression and then be like, oh, what does that mean? Perfect. Um, thanks very much. Um, and uh, one last question is for anyone who is uh, thinking of, for example, um, joining our classes either online or in London, uh, what's their next steps, Faisa? Uh, contact us. Uh, you can email us at clients or you can go to our website. We have all the information there for you. Um, it'll let you understand sort of when our courses are running, what dates, what times. Um, usually the first question is, what's your English level? So you can um, take our free online test to find out what your level is. And then from there, you can be like, right, because I'm, for example, intermediate, I could take our general English course or our business English course. Or for example, if you're planning to go to university, you might want to consider our IELTS course. Um, we've got a lot of new courses running um, because we do sort of specialized courses in different intakes. So we've just started a legal English course this week. Um, next week we'll be doing, uh, we'll be starting an IELTS course and various other ones. So yeah, our website is, is where you can go to find anything. And if you, have, if you still have a question or you want to ask us anything, then just send us an email at clients at London School and we would be more than happy to help you. Great. Thanks very much, uh, Pfizer, for uh, this information and also sharing uh, the social, uh, social program uh, photos with us. Uh, and uh, you're uh, kind of talking a, a little bit about uh, this. And John, thank you yeah. for this fantastic um, content and very, very, very interesting, very useful expressions, particularly uh, for anyone who is visiting us in London, uh, both uh, after their class and a pub, uh, when when they're exploring the city, so uh, that's really nice uh, to uh, uh, to be able to learn them. And uh, of course, thank you very much for everyone who joined us today uh, and for your active participation and uh, lots of examples that you brought uh, of, of different expressions as well. Uh, we hope to see you soon. We have. Uh, uh, we have live streams uh, coming up, and you can see this on our YouTube channel, uh, including uh, live streams on also uh, methodology of learning English, which is uh, coming up uh, soon with John on uh, using games uh, for learning English, as well as some business English live streams. So please be sure to, uh, uh, to join us and uh, to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so uh, thanks again, and we hope you have a fantastic rest of the day, uh, wherever you are, uh, and we'll see you soon.
Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.